Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Yamar Kalmach. I'm the head of the EMOTNET Secretariat. And um, it's a great pleasure to be here and to speak on behalf of the Secretariat and the entire EMOTNET network, consisting of more than 150 organizations. And I think um, it was already great to have uh, Matteo speak about EMOTNET chemistry and later on we'll also hear about um, the EMOTNET bathymetry. And at the Secretariat, we're really doing a lot in terms of the coordination, assisting the Director General of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, who are um, funding this initiative. And we are doing a lot on communication. And so that reverts back to some of the questions that were um, asked about how we can reach out to the different uh, communities and uh, users and stakeholders. And I try to answer some of the uh, questions and some of the actions that we are undertaking um, in this regard. So in my presentation, I don't have enough time to give you a full flavor of what we are all doing uh, within the different EMOTNET projects on the technical level, on the operational level. But I'll give you a little bit of a flavor of uh, why we are doing this um, and also where we stand today and try to look a little bit towards the future uh, to see what we are planning in, on the mid and uh, longer term in terms of development of the EMOTNET services and also in the, in the strategic uh, field of uh, marine data management uh, for Europe. But then finally, I think the core of the presentation will be more focused on outreach, how we engage with stakeholders, how we are trying to convert from a very bottom-up um, science community driven uh, initiative to a more, much more client-oriented and service-oriented um, service. Uh, so, mentioned before, we have a network of 150 organizations that are working hard to assemble marine data sets which are scattered uh, around Europe. But we are coordinating this effort with a five-person secretariat, which is based in a very exotic location of, uh, of Ostend. But we are keeping very warm as we are closely uh, connected in uh, Ostend with a number of other very relevant organizations. Uh, we are co-located with uh, the Flanders Marine Institute, which is coordinating EMOTNET biology. Uh, also, in the innovation side in Ostend, we have IODE. We have other organizations like the European Marine Board. And this, um, this collocation really yes, is cross-fertilizing a lot of the activities that we are doing. And um, it's really beneficial. Also, we are very close to Brussels, where a lot of the policies are being made, which is very useful to participate in the discussions and to, to have some weight on the policy developments. But we are not too close to be... Uh, caught up in all the spinning and the constant changes that happens in Brussels. So we have a, a little bit of distance, which is also quite useful. Um, before we can start talking about what we do in terms of um, marine data management and sharing, I think we have to start with the beginning, because of course there is no management of data if we don't first collect it. A very important in Europe, huh, the huge cost is really in the data collection, and it's a cost which is largely carried by the member states. And as a result, a lot of the data has been collected and stored um, in regional or local data systems or in national data systems, not necess necessarily interconnected. So that's fine if you want to, um, to work on a very local uh, project or initiative. But if you need to patch together data sets from different disciplines or from uh, across uh, different countries or at the sea basin level or even wider if you want to develop a map, a pan-European map, it's very difficult to patch together traditionally. And that's also why about 10 years ago um, the European Commission uh, decided to fund EMOTNET in an attempt uh, to unlock all of the existing data that already sits and is freely available in local national data repositories but which is not, which was not really connected. So which was very difficult to access. So we have been focusing since the beginning on the data side of things. But as you will see later on, we are now also expanding a little bit our reach, a little bit more downstream and upstream towards the data collection side of things and more provision of uh, data and information services and products. So EMOTNET is all about data, um, but we also provide data products. So a lot of the data that has been assembled is used to create data products, maybe maps, but also um, we provide data services, uh, tools to search, retrieve, manipulate, and visualize the data. We do it through 
a set of seven thematic data portals covering geology, biology, chemistry, physics, seabed habitats, human activities, and bathymetry. And one of the great strengths of Imotnet is really its very multidisciplinary nature. Today, we have seven thematic data portals online, a central gateway and central portal. We have also an activity which looks at data adequacy, which is more looking towards um, uh, the data from the perspective of the user. If you want to solve a particular uh, problem, if you want to cite a wind farm, or if you want to, um, to look at what happens in terms of an, an oil leak, what is the impact? How does it uh, evolve over time? Do we have enough data available of the right quality, of the right resolution to solve these problems? And that helps us to identify gaps um, and try to provide advice to, um, to the monitoring and data collection initiatives to improve um, the data availability. We also have a data ingestion facility, which is coordinated uh, by Dick, who is also here, um, which is a service that we provide to those actors, scientists, or private companies who collect data, who own data, uh, who want to share the data but don't have the resources, nor the capability, nor time to make it available. And then we try to make it um, to help them to provide those data and ingest it into our system. To show the relevance um, of Emotnet and what you can do with the service, we also started to collect uh, use cases. And I don't have time to, to go into uh, all of them, but we have a specific section on the central portal under solutions where you can have um, access to these use cases. And we have very different uh, use cases from the different teams um, oriented towards policy in the framework of the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, certain companies using uh, some of the maps in their um, applications or the services that they provide towards the, the bigger industries. So what's next? Um, in the coming two years, we will continue to expand the coverage in terms of the number of parameters, uh, develop higher and um, higher resolution products, make sure that what products we develop are also fit for purpose and we increasingly interact with the user communities to make sure that the products that we are developed are actually um, being used. We're also working a lot on interoperability and coherence between the seven thematic portals because they developed initially from a very, yeah, a bit of an isolated uh, perspective and we're trying to bring them much closer together. We're also working a lot on reaching new um, new user communities, and traditionally the business sectors have been very difficult to reach. Um, I think we are quite well known with the public authorities and the scientific community, but in general the private sector is really uh, not very well connected, although a lot of the resources that we provide could be very useful for them. We're also organizing a number of uh, new sort of uh, activities, such as uh, open data competitions and hackathons. And I'll try to tell you a little bit more about that later on. So how do we see it evolve? I think we'll continue working uh, as a core on the marine data management and sharing uh, component of the marine knowledge value chain. But we are also um, engaging a little bit more with the data uh, collection and um, marine monitoring communities because it's still a very fragmented uh, landscape there. And we do that under the framework of what we call the European Ocean Observing System. And in two weeks' time in Brussels, we'll organize a conference where we'll try to bring together all of the various communities that are collecting data in Europe to see how they can work better together. And we have to make sure that that is very well aligned um, with what we are doing at the side of European coordination in terms of management uh, and sharing of that, uh, the resulting observations and data. At the same time, we're also um, trying to promote um, the data products that we produce towards a wider audience and the general public of non-technical uh, experts because Emotnet is really targeted towards experts, um, data experts, while the European Atlas of the Seas, which is <coughs> being managed by the Emotnet Secretariat since September last year, is a tool which is really targeted towards the wider public, uh, students, but also policymakers who don't have the technical expertise 
to really download raw data and manipulate them, so have ready available information and maps for them to be used. But it's also a very useful tool to promote the hard work that's been done by the EU bodies, and in particular by Imonet. So that brings me to the last part of the presentation and zoom in a little bit on what we're trying to do on um, working towards and working with um, the different uh, target user communities. Uh, Imotnet is targeted towards the public sector, uh, scientific community, private sector, but also civil society. So these are the, the, the way, wider groups that we are trying to work with. We've done this um, by making our portals much more attractive and much more user-friendly to try and limit the amount of clicks that you need um, to reach the data, uh, the data products and the data itself, to try and avoid too much description about the projects but really serve directly what the user wants. And we're trying to roll that out. We started with the central portal and we're now rolling that out uh, towards the different um, thematic portals as well. We are also having a number of ways that we interact with users through very passively through uh, user surveys, but also we uh, do targeted interviews and assessments every year of the different uh, portals in terms of the friendliness um, and the functionality and that we feed back to the thematic portal so that they can take these comments into account. We've been working with the business, um, the uh, maritime industries, uh, since the beginning of this year. We had a targeted campaign. We had several meetings with uh, business associations to understand what they would need from Emotnet if they want to use it, but also in how they can contribute because they collect a lot of data which we would like to use to enrich our, um, our pool of resources. There's also an opportunity uh, to join Emotnet that we created for those who are not project partners. So any organization that wishes to be closer aligned and be involved in the network's activities, provide advice or steering, uh, can do so by becoming an, an associated partner. So if you would like more information about that, you're free to uh, contact me or we can talk about it and you, you can join the network um, if you want. Then I would like to just say a few words about an activity that we did last year for the very first time. It was a bit of a learning, um, a learning curve. We organized the first Emotnet Open Sea Lab, which is a hackathon, three-day event in Antwerp. We brought together people from different backgrounds, um, technical experts, programmers, but also marine scientists, uh, students, um, architects, um, entrepreneurs, and they joined in different teams uh, working on, on different topics, developing applications. And we had some very nice results, applications on uh, locating the, the beach, uh, best beaches in Europe, for example, or citing uh, the best location for um, algal production farms. Uh, and that was very worthwhile to do and it's something that we want to repeat. So next year in September, again in Antwerp, we will have a three-day hackathon. So if you are interested, please consult the Open Sea Lab website and we'll be very, very welcome to, uh, to see you there. Then, to end my presentation as a strong communication tool to show what we've been doing with Emotnet, we have uh, the European Atlas of the Sea since uh, last year um, at the Secretariat. And we have now 120 layers of Emotnet that we uh, make available through, uh, through the Atlas. And this is one example, the, the Emotnet Seabed Habitats layer. You can uh, display, but you can overlay also with other um, layers that come from Eurostat, for example, or joint the GRC. So it's really an interesting tool for all of you as well um, to, to consult and see what, uh, what we are producing. We also, um, as part of this initiative, are working on educational programs. So we're working with uh, teachers um, to try and, and make the European Atlas embedded into their uh, <laughs> curriculum. And we have also established strategic uh, <coughs> partnerships with Aquaria. And for example, we just signed an MOU with Nausicaa, one of the, the biggest um, aquaria in Europe, it's in, located in France, to work together on their exhibitions. And so to make the Emotnet um, uh, maps and also the European Atlas visible in their activities. And on that, I thank you.